Good morning, and welcome to our series, Questions and Answers for a World in Crisis. Today, part two of devotion from Sri Aurobindo. All the word and all the thought become one hymning of the universal greatness, light, beauty, power, and truth that has revealed itself in its glory to the human spirit and a worship of the one supreme soul and infinite person. All the long stress of the inner self to break outward becomes a form now of spiritual endeavor and aspiration to possess the divine in the soul and realize the divine in the nature. All life becomes a constant yoga and unification of that divine and this human spirit. This is the manner of the integral devotion. It creates a single uplifting of our whole being and nature through sacrifice by the dedicated heart to the eternal Purushottama. The way of works, too, turns into an adoration and a devotion of self-giving because it is an entire sacrifice of all our will and its activities to the one Purushottama. This absolute self-giving, this one-minded surrender, is the devotion which the Gita makes the crown of its synthesis. All action and effort are, by this devotion, turned into an offering to the Supreme and Universal Godhead. To make the mind one with the Divine Consciousness, to make the whole of our emotional nature one love of God everywhere, to make all our works one sacrifice to the Lord of the worlds, and all our worship and aspiration one adoration of Him and self-surrender to direct the whole self Godwards in an entire union is the way to rise out of a mundane into a divine existence. This is the Gita's teaching of divine love and devotion in which knowledge works and the heart's longing become one in a supreme unification, emerging of all their divergences, an intertwining of all their threads, a high fusion, a wide identifying movement. I have no objection at all to the worship of Krishna or the Vaishnava form of devotion. Nor is there any incompatibility between Vaishnava bhakti and my supramental yoga. There is, in fact, no special and exclusive form of supramental yoga. All ways can lead to the supermind 
just as all ways can lead to the divine. The integral turning of the soul Godwards bases royally the Gita's synthesis of knowledge and works and devotion. If the psychic unites itself with the divine, it cannot be separated. Separation is non-union. The psychic realization is one of diversity in unity, the portion and the whole. It is not one of dissolving like a drop of water in the sea, for then no love or devotion is possible, unless it is love of oneself, devotion to oneself. There can be no th such thing as a mechanical and artificial devotion. There is either devotion or there is not. Devotion may be intense or not intense, complete or incomplete, sometimes manifest and sometimes veiled. But mechanical or artificial devotion is a contradiction in terms. Yes, that was what happened, but also the flow of devotion and love is a thing which the more it repeats or awakens is bound to overflow to all the parts of the being and have its effect on them. If one does not encourage the devotion of the emotional being merely because the lower vital is not yet under control and acts differently, then how is the devotion to grow? And how is the lower vital to change? Until the final clarification and harmonizing of the nature there are always contradictions in the being. But that is not a reason for in any way suppressing the play of the better movements. On the contrary, it is these that should be cultivated and made to increase. How shall I be able to judge that I am in the full state of psychic love? by the absence of ego, by pure devotion, by submission and surrender to the divine. Disciple, I often mark that when an inner love springs out for the divinity, tears follow. Sri Aurobindo, these are the psychic tears of devotion, etc. Love and devotion depend on the opening of the psychic, and for that the desires must go. The vital love offered by many to the mother, instead of the psychic love, brings more disturbance than anything because it is coupled with desire. Disciple, is there no place for mental and vital devotion in this yoga? Sri Aurobindo, who says there is not? So long as it is real devotion, all bhakti has a place. It is always a mistake to attach importance to what others say. It is enough to have true devotion 
and the right attitude towards the mother. You need have no apprehension of this kind at all. Do not allow mental anxiety to harass you. Wait on the working of the mother's force, which will open the lotus of the heart. In the light from above, devotion will blossom in you. How to get a pure and complete devotion? Sri Aurobindo Get quiet first. Then from the quietude, aspire and open yourself quietly and sincerely to the mother. When you rise with the vital, from its lower reaches and join it to the psychic, then your vital being fills with the pure aspiration and devotion natural to the psychic. At the same time, it gives to the feelings its own abundant energy. It makes them dynamic for the change of the whole nature down to the most physical and for the bringing down of the divine consciousness into earth matter. Faith and devotion come from the soul and it is only when the vital has entirely submitted to the soul that one can truly lead the spiritual life. Aspire always for the mind and psychic being to be filled with the true consciousness and experience and made ready. You must aspire especially for quietness, peace, a calm faith, an increasing steady wideness for more and more knowledge, for a deep and intense but quiet devotion. There is a right part of the vital which must be used. Ardent, sensitive to the higher things, capable of great love, and devotion. Strengthen that and support it on the psychic and on the peace and wideness that comes from above. Namaste.